Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where I'm going to be talking about my 500 book TBR again. This time I'm going to be talking about science fiction. So I am reading 500 books before I read any new ones. It's the challenge, the read what you own challenge that was created by Criminali that I have twisted into the 500 book challenge because I'm crazy. So actually I've already read four books. So, you know, I'm well on my way, right, Roger? Roger is not particularly happy about this whole situation. Sorry, Roger, I know you love to buy books, but he's not allowed to bring any more books into the manor until I've read 500 books. And man, do I have more than 500 books to read. So I have showed my science fiction or, or bits and pieces of it fairly often because I talk about my Vintage Science Fiction project, which I've been doing. And this will actually give me a chance to make a teensy tiny dent in that Vintage Science Fiction. But it's not only Vintage Science Fiction that I have to read. I've got, I've got a, a few different science fiction books to read. I've got a lot of science fiction books to read, but the majority of it is going to be vintage. Um, to give you an idea, I, I can't show everything because that would take many videos, but just to give you an idea of some of the stuff that I'll be reading uh, for, for my 500 book challenge, uh, let us journey down into the vault of ancient science fiction. It's down below the manor. Okay, before I enter the vault, I just want to uh, remind you that I am going to be doing the Astounding Science Fiction project as well, uh, which means I'll, for the next two years, every month, I'll be reading an issue of, the Ast of Astounding Science Fiction magazine, uh, starting with January 1951 and going through 1952. So I've got two years worth of Astounding here, 1951 and 1952, every issue from those years. And I'll be reading an issue every month for the next two years. So that'll be cool. Okay, I am in the vault of ancient science fiction, and we're just going to take a, cup, a look at a couple of the boxes that are in here so you can get an idea of some of the things that I have to read for science fiction. Now, obviously, this is not a vintage edition of this particular book. This is Man in the High Castle, but this is like the TV show version of that. And this is actually new as well, or newer. This is The Mercurian by Leigh Brackett, but this has uh, the early Eric John Stark stories. And it's the only print copy I've been able to find of the early Eric John Stark stories. But we also have some old stuff. This is actually from uh, the Science Fiction Book Club, if I'm remembering right. Uh, they came out with this, A Treasury of Great Science Fiction, in two volumes. There's one volume there. We've got the second volume there. And we've got The Lensman, E.E. E. Doc Smith. This is the book club edition. I have the complete Lensman in these two book club volumes. What else do I have in here? Slaughterhouse 5. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is the year's best horror story. So yeah, I have horror, some horror mixed up in the vintage science fiction. That is just going to happen. And what is this? Uh, this is The Golden Apples of the Sun from Ray Bradbury. But this also is unusual, this box, because there are a lot of hardcovers in here. Um, which one is this? This is Nomad of the Time Stream by Michael Moorcock. Damon Knight's Science Fiction of the 30s. That's a pretty cool anthology. And over here, we've got uh, Morley Brackett. This is the Book of Scathe. This, these are the novels of Eric John Stark, her adventure hero with this very big puppy who doesn't look particularly menacing. And then we've got the best of Lay Brackett here. So I've got some Lay Brackett to read. That's awesome. And uh, a science fiction Argosy. Argosy, this is a huge anthology. Uh, edited by Damon Knight. So that's pretty cool. And stepping over here, I've got the Science Fiction Hall of Fame, 
so that's cool. That's an excellent anthology that you'll see uh, pop up on BookTube now and again. We've got Earthman Come Home from James Blish. I've got a random issue of Astounding. What is this? This is May 1955. That's random. Uh, A.E. Van Vogt, Empire of Isher. That's pretty cool. Oh, we've got Before the Golden Age. That's an excellent anthology, Before the Golden Age. What are, oh, and then we've got some Philip K. Dick in a book club edition down there. We've got uh, <laughs> Jack of Shadows from Roger Zelazny. This was supposed to be a series, a century of science fiction, where they were going to print a bunch of science fiction in this anthology series that never went past... 1950 through 1959. Uh, and yeah, they also did a horror one. Uh, who published this? Uh, who published this stuff? Because I can't remember. It was MJF Books, whoever they were. <laughs> but uh, they never got past the 70s in a century of horror either. Uh, this is the only decade they, that, that they did. Then we've got some Henry Kootner there, Fury, Mutant, The Best of Henry Kootner, which I have all of those in old paperbacks as well. And what else do I have? More, more Science Fiction Hall of Fame. That's pretty cool. More Science Fiction Hall of Fame, Volume 2B. I don't remember if they went further than this in hardcover. I don't remember. Oh, this is cool. And the smoke, the, her smoke right rose up forever her smoke rose up forever by james tiptree jr that's pretty cool got some robert e howard because robert e howard has to be hiding everywhere this is nameless cults uh the cthulhu mythos fiction of robert e howard that's a great cover there and uh what's over here we've got uh the oxford book of science fiction stories Ooh, we've got uh here's some paperbacks hiding in here uh, the Exile of Time by Ray Cummings. You don't see too much Ray Cummings around. <laughs> We've got the novelization of Silent Running. Remember that movie? Probably not. Ooh, Splinter in the Mind's Eye by Alan Dean Foster. His sequel to Star Wars before Empire Strikes Back came out. Then we've got uh, The City in the Stars by Arthur C. Clarke. Ooh, an ace double is hiding in here. We've got City Under the Sea by Kenneth Bulmer. Excuse my... Is that, is that you, Lena? My cat Lena is making noise. Starways by Paul Anderson. Starways. Not Star Wars. Starways. What else do we have? A.E. Van Vogt, The Wizard of Lynn. Ah, some cool stuff is hiding out in here. And this is an interesting old one. This is No Man's Land by Simon Watson. To Outrun Doomsday by Kenneth Bulmer. To Outrun Doomsday. That's pretty cool. <laughs> this is such a strange cover. I've shown this one before. Andre Norton's Lord of Thunder. That, What is even going on there? I don't know, but it is thrilling science fiction, says the Springfield Republican on the blurb. Then we've got Roger Zelazny's uh, famous This Immortal, which is, that's kind of a cool cover. And we have A.E. Van Vogt's Slan. And we've got Death Bird Stories from Harlan Ellison. Beautiful cover there. And hiding out here we have uh, The Moon Pool, which is a pretty, a pretty important story from A. Merritt. So that's pretty cool. And this is just two boxes out of many boxes hiding out in here. It's... 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 It's pretty dense, the vault. So we should probably get out of here before the robot guardians come for me. So I'm back in the house, but I have a few of these boxes that I've dragged up from the vault previously and just kind of left up here. So maybe I'll open up one of these to just check out the paperbacks. And I just opened a random box here uh, just so you can get an idea of the paperbacks that I have to go through, because most of what I have are actually paperbacks, and some of them are not actually science fiction, like <laughs> like this one, which is, I believe, the first Xanth book from Piers Anthony. It's one of them. Uh, I think it might be the first one. 
Anyway, it's the best novel of the year, the British Fantasy Society said. So, yeah, I've got that one. And uh, look, it's more fantasy. It's The King of Elfland's Daughter by Lord Dunsany. So that's kind of cool. And there's The Golden Apples of the Sun. Because I have to have several copies of every Ray Bradbury book, just like, <laughs> just like a lot of them. The Many Words, Worlds of Barry Malsberg. So you've, I've opened this one before, or at least, yeah, Moon is a Harsh Mistress. But this will give you an idea of a lot of the paperbacks I've got to go through. I mean, I've got The Martian Mist. Yeah, I definitely have uh, checked these out before. Yeah, yeah, I remember this one, The Atlantic Abomination with that big guy from John Bruner. Yeah, okay. I've opened this one before, at least. These all look very familiar. So, yeah, but, you know, and here's another box, which I haven't opened. But it's also full of science fiction. I've got so many of these boxes uh, to go through. So I'm set as far as vintage science fiction is concerned. See, we made it back alive. Right, Roger? Well, one of us did. Anyway, that was just some of the older stuff that I'm going to be reading. I've got a lot of it to read, but I've also got some stuff that's not quite so old. Uh, actually, this is, I just found this hanging out up here, and this is Callisto by Lynn Carter, which is, it's, it's vintage by this point. When did this come out? When did you come out, Callisto, the first time? Edgar Rice Burroughs pastiche. So yeah, 1972. So it's, it's, at least as vintage as I am, <laughs> Callisto. This is actually a cover that was originally supposed to be on a lay bracket Eric John Stark novel, I believe, that was repurposed for Callisto. Callisto, Lynn Carter's John Carter of Mars pastiche. Uh, this has two novels of Callisto. Callisto was one of his more entertaining series up to a point. Up to a point, but I've got all of the Callisto books, so I just found this hanging out up here. And also, since we're talking about Edgar Rice Burroughs' pastiche, I do need to read this one as well. This is Gary Levisi. Uh, this is his book, The Winged Men. Now, Gary Levisi is on YouTube, so this would count as a booktuber book. So I will get to this. It will be one of my 500. Uh, this is The Adventures of John Kirk. John Kirk of Ares. John Kirk of Ares. So Edgar Rice Burroughs' Adventure from Gary Levisi. But the book I've probably been waiting the longest on is this one, which my good friend Justin gave me oh so many years ago. Back in the 90s, I believe, he gave this to me. This is The Anubis Gates by Tim Powers. I'm going to be reading this next year. It is going to be one of my 500 books that I read for the challenge. But another kind booktuber sent me these books. This is uh, from Dave and Olive from Book Blather. They sent me the Stephen Baxter book. This is The Time Ships which is supposed to be a sequel to one of my very favorite stories, H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. It's much larger, but it's supposed to be an excellent book, Stephen Baxter's The Time Ships, so I want to get to that. But Stephen Baxter also wrote this one, which was sent to me by Dave and Olive. This is Evolution by Stephen Baxter. So I want to get to that one, too. Those will be in my 500, but... The one I really feel ridiculous for never having read, and I can't believe I haven't read this yet, is this. This is The Book of the New Sun, which is actually four books that are published in two volumes here by Gene Wolfe. And this is supposed to be absolutely fantastic. So there's that. There's also the second volume has the other two books in it of the Book of the New Sun. Now, these two books I've heard good reviews on. We will see. This is The Age of Rust by C. Robert Cargill. This is one of those books I bought because I saw some reviews about it on BookTube. BookTube, 
which made me buy a lot of books. This being one of them, and then this sequel, which, which is actually a prequel, which I hear good things about. There's actually one more thing that I forgot to bring up. Hold on. Okay, I definitely wanted to mention this. This is Tales of the Dying Earth by Jack Vance. I've been wanting to read this forever. It seems like this has all four Dying Earth novels in one volume. So it's four books in one. I'm going to count it as four because, you know, I'm doing 500 books, so yeah. The Dying Earth novels. I, I've been looking forward to reading these forever. And now that I'm not buying a ton of more books, or at least somebody isn't, I'll finally have the chance to read it. So there you go. But I also have books lurking on my Kindle, and I just want to mention a few that I want to prioritize. The first is Hyperion, Hyperion by Dan Simmons. This novel I have read, but I read it years and years ago. I probably read it short, I probably read it when it first came out in paperback, actually. That's how long ago I read it. And I've wanted to read it again since then. It's one of the greatest science fiction books of all time. So obviously I want to read that again. And the only way I own it is on the Kindle as ebook. So definitely want to read that one. And I also want to read the best of Fritz Leiber, the best of Fritz Leiber, which remarkably, I believe I only have a Kindle edition of this. I don't think I own a physical copy of this. I could be wrong. As I go through those vintage science fiction boxes, I might stumble upon this because I can't remember everything that's down there. But I think I only have this as an ebook, so definitely that. But this next one is interesting. This is The Journeys of McGill Fahan, Fagan, by Kevin O'Donnell Jr. And this has been highly recommended by Steve Donahue. And Steve Donahue actually sent me ebook copies of this series. It's a series of four books, which I have never read, I don't believe. Although I believe at one time I at least had one or two of them in paperback. So it's possible that I read one and just don't remember it, but I'm thinking I haven't. I, I thinking, I'm thinking I need to read all four of these books uh, because Steve Donahue speaks so highly of them. They have to be good. So I definitely want to read those. Now, another one which I haven't read since I was a kid is Death World. Death World by Harry Harrison. There's actually three Death World books, but... Shockingly, I've only got the first two Death World books. I don't have Death World 3, so I probably won't read that for a few years. But I got the first two on Kindle. I think I got them really, really cheap, or next to nothing, or for nothing. I don't remember. But I've got Death World by Harry Harrison. I've got a bunch of other Death, uh, bunch of other Harry Harrison books among my vintage science fiction. But I don't think Death World... I don't think I've got Death World in a physical copy, remarkably enough. But so definitely that's the only way I have these. But one of the really cool things I have are multiple volumes of the best of amazing stories. The best of amazing stories, there are a lot of eBooks, eBook volumes of these, which go year by year. And I can't remember what year they start with, but I've got them all, I believe. I believe I have every, I have every one that I saw. I just bought a ton of these for the King for the Kindle, the best of amazing stories. So I definitely want to read those. That'll take a while in itself. So as you can see, I've got a lot of science fiction to read and that that's just scratching the surface. Uh, I've got more physical copies around here of other books I'm going to read. Uh, and I also have, you know, I have a lot. I have a lot. I'm going to be doing all right on science fiction. So yeah. In fact, I could just do only science fiction for the challenge, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I've got too much else I want to get to. So yeah, there you go. My 500 book TBR, 500 book challenge science fiction TBR video. Wasn't it amazing? It was, I, I was amazed. Were you amazed? Look how amazed he is. Damn, he's always so excited, Roger. Okay, guys. I will see you next time.